a nice exercise. I like this exercise a lot because this exercise, I think it's one of the best examples. Obviously, you can think of different versions of the exercise. Instead of girl, you can say boy, or instead of speaking about children, you can speak about whatever you want. But this is a type of exercise which is extremely nice because a little change in the text of the exercise, obviously the change is not switching a girl with a boy, but if you change a little bit the way in which you are provided the information, uh, makes the solution different and also quite substantially. And it's also one of those examples in which probability shows itself as a fascinating field because sometimes it can be counterintuitive. Okay, so sometimes uh, probability can have these, uh, this fact that the solution you obtain by applying the probabilistic reasoning is not the first solution you would reach just by um, relying on intuition. Now, this is the exercise. Uh, I tell you that I have two children, okay? And I also tell you that one of my children is a girl. Now, my question is, what is the probability that I have two girls? So, you know that I have two children, and I tell you that one of the children is a girl. Now, my question is, what is the probability that also the other, essentially, is a girl such that I have two girls? We also provide some additional information to simplify the computation. So, we assume that... Um, the probability that if you have a kid, if you have a child, uh, he or she is a boy or a girl is essentially the same. So the probability of, um, of birth of a boy or a girl is the same. And we also assume that the, the genders are independent. So the fact that uh, my first child is a girl does not affect the fact that the second child is a girl or a boy. Okay, so you assume independence. Now, this is a nice exercise. Why? Because the solution is the following. And if you think about the solution, it's not particularly complicated. But if you have also considered the next exercise, which is exercise five, then you see that it is tricky. Why? Because I can do the following. So we know that the probability of a boy or a girl is the same, and this is one of The two genders are independent, so there is not any problem with that. Now, if I consider two children, there are uh, four possibilities. I can have two girls that we call GG, I can have two boys that I call double B, so BB. I can have a girl and a boy, so GB. And I can have a boy and a girl, so BG. But if I tell you that one of my kids is a girl, obviously I can immediately exclude BB, so the double B. Because if I tell you that one is a girl, I cannot have two boys you know that the total number of children I have is two, and one is a girl. So the remaining possibilities are double G, so GG, GB, so girl and boy, and boy and girl. So what happens? The probability of having two girls, given that I told you that I have uh, a girl already, is one over three, because I have just three possibilities, that are double G, BG, and GB. And one of these possibilities is the only one I'm interested in, which is the double G. So one over three. So the probability in that case is one third. The probability that I will have a couple of daughters, so two, two girls as children, is one third. 
because the information I give you about the fact that one of the ladies is a girl immediately rules out the possibility of having two boys. Now, this exercise is interesting because I can change it a little bit, which is exercise five. The first part is essentially the same. You know that I have two children and that one of them is a girl. I invite you. Daughter is not my wife because obviously you can see the age. Okay, so you can rightly assume that this is my daughter. Now the question is, what is the probability that I have two girls? Now, the point is uh, that for what concerns the assumptions about the probability of being a boy and a girl is exactly the same, and also the independence of the genders. So that part is the same. What really changes here is that you are not told, you are not just told that I have a girl, that I have two children and one is a girl, but you see the girl. Okay, so you see the girl in front of you because she's opening the door for you when you are coming at my place. Now here you see the difference. The answer that we get for this exercise is not the same answer that we had for the previous one. In the previous one, we had one third. In this exercise, the probability that I have two girls is one half. Why? Because in the very moment in which you see the girl in front of you, you are blocking that position. So this is acquired knowledge for you. So if you are a little bit familiar with Bayesian statistics, uh, the difference in the two exercises is essentially the difference that lies between having just a priori knowledge and heavy a priori knowledge that is updated by observing a phenomenon. This is the case. So you see the girl, and once you see the girl, what is the chance that the other missing child is a girl or a boy? It's just one half. Because one, I fix one of the two positions, girl, then I am in the situation in which the other one is boy, or the other one is girl. And the probability that it's a boy is one half, the probability that it's a girl is one half, given the assumptions that we gave initially. So in this second exercise, the probability of having a girl, so, uh, that is to say the probability that also the second uh, child is a girl, so the probability that I have two girls is one half, okay? You see the difference. Now, if you do not believe me, so if you do not believe the justifications that I gave you, there is a formal way of proving this result. And I'm pretty sure that you know where I'm heading to. So the formal way of verifying this um, exercise, so the difference in these exercises is essentially to use one fundamental theorem of probability, which is the Bayes theorem or the Bayes formula, as you want to call it, is exactly the same stuff.